Hi, I'm Rob Wilson, President of Employco USA. Welcome to this week's HR Chat. With me is Jason Isaac, our Vice President of HR. Hi, everyone. So, Jason, we're in 2023 already. 22 flew by. Right. So what are the top three HR trends that you uh, are seeing for 23? So we can look in three different buckets. The first one is increased wages. So I think this year we're going to continue to see increased wages as uh, inflation continues to keep creeping up there with the Fed to keep in- in- increasing that interest rate. I think we're going to continue to see wages. So we saw going into this year an average merit pay increase around 4.6%. I think we'll keep seeing those maybe mid-year increases or this time next year, kind of around that 4%, 5% range again. And that was, in previous years, it was more in the like 25 3%. Right, right. Right. We're we're hitting all-time highs here, at least for the last, whatever, 20, 30 years. HR trend number two? Uh, We're we're gonna continue to see pay transparency. So not only uh, there are certain states that are requiring it, especially California's leading the way there, where they're requiring any employer who has a job opening to post internal or, or external job postings to include the pay range that the employer is looking to pay for that position. So California is leading the way. There are other states and cities doing something similar. But we're also seeing volunteer employers in different states that aren't required doing the same thing because it's one of the first questions that people are asking nowadays is what is the pay because the pay is just going through the roof. It, it's one of the first things that people want to know up front. Right. And uh, number three, well-being focus? Yeah, so well-being. I mean, employers uh, over the last few years have been doing a really good job on focusing on some of the perks and EAP programs and some of those kind of ancillary type benefits. But I think this year we're going to continue seeing a full well-being uh, kind of assistance for employees, uh, not only kind of that benefits well-being, but financial well-being, uh, mental well-being. So providing them mental and financial resources that will help them maybe even in their personal lives, that would also translate to the workplace with productivity right. and retention and absenteeism. You know, in the past, a lot of small employers wouldn't do anything in the wellness because they're buying health insurance. They know it has no direct result because they're kind of group rated with a bunch of other small businesses. But really now you're seeing businesses uh, embrace wellness across all company sizes. Yeah, and I think it's a, it's a great time for it because some people are still very stressed coming out of COVID and what's my job going to look like? What's the economy? What's the recession going to look like? So I think it's a good time to provide that kind of holistic approach to your work- workforce. Right. Great. Thanks, Jason, for the top three HR trends for uh, to look at in 23. We appreciate you joining us for, uh, for our short HR chat this week. Jason, if there's any questions, people should contact you at hr at employco.com. Yeah, we, we'd love to help any way we can. Great. Thanks for joining us.